Okay, being on black folks, and basically we get lucky enough, I've, I watched the video that I, you know, it's this is all from Nehemiah, and we want to thank the, everybody at Nehemiah Station and all the scientists and conglomeration that concludes and gives us these video webcam shots from down there. But anyway, we get lucky enough on one of, they used to have, they've got new snow uh, grooming machines, basically, that they, they have their labs and their research facilities in these. They used to pull around some uh, snow cat uh, track. Uh, they might still be using those ob observation machines. Maybe they've sold them to some other scientific group or somebody down in, in you know, anybody that's in the snowpack area or something. But they have these new ones. And w when I zoom out in a minute, you're going to know. I'm going to zoom in on, basically, we have, we're lucky enough to have that uh, dying star, plus probably some more dying stars, black radioactive hot objects here that are in front and now pretty much it's a constant because we've seen this for more than two years we've been I've been studying this and in Nehemiah we in you'll I'll pop out and play the video a little bit you can watch the video before this and you'll see what I'm talking about but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna blow in on these basically what this is this is a dying star that's still bright and hot like our Sun and smaller okay and it's always constantly between the Sun and us and basically, one side of it you usually see, and it's way more than one object. And you'll see the dying radioactive uh, here that basically, the remnants that are in front of the sun, and also in front of this sun, because this is not the sun, because it's smaller. There's suns and supergiants and so forth. And I'm going to glow in on this, and you're going to you're going to go, wow, that's the same. Well, somewhat, but it's just like the remnants that are at the sun now. I could be wrong and we're actually just getting a footprint of the sun here and it's almost like a laser beam okay it's almost like a laser beam there's nothing really I'm just basically when I'm zooming in I'm end up touching now I'm not gonna be able to point or the crap because when I see these but you can see I can talk to you in voice and you see those triangular terahydrons tetrahydrons basically rotating stars dead dying radioactive remnants planets between us and the sun and then basically this is basically we just got lucky to get a blast on the back of one of these and it, it might be getting uh, maybe they may have a telescope in the back of one of these trailers and it's getting uh, basically but no matter what we are getting even if there's no telescope in the back of the, the vehicle we're just basically the back of the vehicle ends up being like a uh, telescope and I don't have the name of it on my tip of my tongue or my brain Thing, but it's a reflective telescope and we get this reflective action and then I'm going to be able to zoom all the way out because basically I was just watching to see if my video had uploaded okay I don't watch all my videos honestly sometimes I put videos up that I it's like okay I think I did a pretty good enough job and someone will email me or tell me if I screwed up something in my video and I've been able to correct not going to go into technicalities but anyway here we go so there you have terahydron tetrahydron is basically radioactive still hot uh, so they give a radioactive black light ray to us here on Earth, more than likely. Now that's somewhat of a theory, but those objects right there are actually there. And you actually have a smaller sun. Or if it is, even if I'm incorrect on that, it doesn't matter, you have the sun blasting the back of this. And it, I'm not wrong because basically we've zoomed in on what makes a dark object in space. Now see, this is not so bright that it's pixelizing in the camera either. You see, that camera does not, it's a scientific, it doesn't matter, it's a good enough camera, high quality enough that it does not black out on the light beam stuff. That stuff is actually there because I can prove it from NASA space shots from LASCO that this stuff is up in front of the sun and or suns. And that physicist is dead, but he knew that there was more than one sun that we rotate around, okay? And there's also stuff, remnants between us and the sun here on Earth, and it's always there. Uh, and basically, now I'm going to go and zoom in. We're, you can see we're at Nehemiah, and it just blasts it on the back of the trailer, and I'll get down to the regular. I'll go to like 150. And I can also zoom in on this here real fast. Let me save some tape time and get on this, and then we'll hit play, and you'll see this. And they, that's why they line these up here, is they are viewing this stuff that is in front of the sun. They are trying to decipher the same thing that we're looking at. And as they're trying to decipher, they might have better views than we have, but we have a pretty good view from the webcam looking at them, looking and observing. These are basically scientific labs out here. Every one of these. Whether they go somewhere else with them out there on the on the Antarctic and 
to check stuff out, but it sure seems to be since they're looking at the same thing we're looking at right here, and basically there's an also a good uh, reflective telescope view. Either that or we do, oh, I'm going to zoom in on this star right there real fast. I'm going to pop back up 700, and as you can see, that's the time frame and everything below. I'm not even going to hit it and touch it with my cursor to be able to let you see that. But we'll put our 777 in again, really. I've just been using that lately for getting in and zooming. And then we're going to go up and look at that uh, object, that the star that's in the sky. Now, w what I'm trying to figure out is if this is actually... I believe this is that the atmosphere is thin enough that we actually... It's not really a leader, and it's actually somewhere quadrillion mile, you know, way spa uh, uh, astronomical amount in space and basically it makes an electrical connection with whatever star uh, which one of the suns we're not sure that we see through the thin atmosphere and then through the thin atmosphere you see this star over here because basically I'm going to zoom in now and you will end up seeing that star in actually its shadow in space and basically remember a shadow in space is the same size as the object in space and we're going to keep zooming in here. I think I can go to 1600 and you're going to, there'll be a point in time where you actually can visually see it before that and you can see that that's the star. So basically the atmosphere is thin enough up there that we're seeing all this stuff. So Nehemiah, North, North and South Pole are great places to look at stars. Through, right straight through our atmosphere with your eyeballs and as you see there's a star and then basically its shadow or orbitals because they're dark because this sun and all the sun and the supergiants are putting out, so basically there is either we're seeing complete, you're, you're seeing the stargate, <laughs> the, the loopholes to get to whatever through space, because then either there's a planet, planetoid objects here in these dark spots, or it's complete darkness in the idea that there's no starlight, and so basically we could travel through time in space very fast through those holes, and those keyholes and it's all physics. So basically, let me get this other, and okay, that's a star there basically. Now I'm going to zoom in real fast. I'll get this all the way up. I think we can go to like 1600, but then it's going to end up, you know, you can still see that that's a star. I think I'll move over a little bit, and then we'll still be able to, will it, will it stay? I don't know. I, there, I got the magnifier away magically, like, like, luckily there that it, okay, so there is a star there. Okay, way out, and it's basically the thinness of the atmosphere of the rural almost like it's getting as thin as like Mars when I showed you basically the actual factual NASA that the idea that those were stars on the ground because the atmosphere in in uh, uh, now let me scoop back down the atmosphere at Mars is thin we knew that and then the idea that the stars can be seen much easier and better so that, and scientists know that now and they really want to get be able to see a lot more and they basically are all these are observation posts and they are seeing all the there's a bunch of astronomers down there besides, you know, studying the fish underneath, because there's actually, they're studying underneath this tundra here. There's crawl fish down there at certain, I'm not sure if it's right there at Nehemiah or at other stations. So basically, this is the quantum physics, the spooky that, that uh, Einstein talked about, okay? Uh, and basically, we, at the quantum and studying what they're uh, smashing atoms together, they're studying quantum and they're getting they're seeing spooky and then the idea that when we get to a quantum a quantum is an atom it's the smallest molecule that we know of besides a microscope and I'm getting some fun from somebody uh, supervising your data and control or something but anyway I can't I apologize for this I'm working on them constantly working on my technical sound issues okay uh, they don't want this information to get out so basically you're looking at the spookiness of when we're looking at this and even though it's not, this isn't spooky because I know what this stuff is. I've seen it through Lasco, through Soho. It's remnants that are up between us and the suns, or sun, okay? Depending on what you want to believe. I know the theories and I know the actual facts of what we've seen from Soho shots that there is. And i.e. there's bazillions astronomical infinite amount of stars. And basically, basically there is infinite stars out there because the galaxies are growing as... Uh, actual factual and you are seeing right there the spookiness that uh, in quantum physics end of uh, what uh, Einstein's theory remember th Einstein was a theorist and also a scientist and so forth and yes but the idea that there were some theories that he was wrong on and also basically judging the distances in the theory of uh, distance in space and time 
And now, basically, I can also here in a second, I'm not trying to spook you up, but let me give you a actual what five stars will do in light and space in this shot. Okay, folks, and basically, you're seeing starlight right here. Okay, now I'm going to show you what at least five stars can do. They can give us stargate. So basically, the theory of relativity and traveling through time and space. And yes, I could probably put you someplace 72 light years away in 72 hours. And there is stargate. And there is like basically factual. I'm not sure at what magnification. It doesn't matter. You'll be able to see without me flapping my lips. And there is five stars. Okay, and I will be able to zoom in, and we'll even travel time <laughs> really fast. You're looking through time and space. Five stars, bright enough. Relativity, and uh, the theories are pretty much correct. There's a little bit, and I can even end up showing you what the theories. It's factual. What Einstein knew that he was wrong on one theory, and he the way they words that he worded it when he blundered. But uh, a lot of his stuff is true. Uh, when he started looking at uh, uh, black matter, uh, spooky is what he called it, moving protons. Now we know that uh, a uh, quantum actually is heavier and uh, then the smallest item is actually uh, heavier than a smaller than a bigger uh, atom. Okay, so then that's basically the some, there's some magical, I mean, not magical, actual factual truth to the physics. And basically, I'll keep on minus and out here real fast. And as we s we're able to get a shot through time and space, those stars are basically glimmering off of, uh, I'm not even caring what right now, but I think it's a snowmobile there. And it's in that shot, and you can zoom into it, and then I'll zoom out of this. And uh, that's what five stars, uh, and basically, uh, Einstein was alive when a certain flag was, yes, just basically... Uh, a country honoring its smartest uh, religious figure, basically. So anyway, whatever. Just basically. Anyway, sac uh, scientific, actual, factual that, uh, yes, I do believe that we're on the cusp of traveling through time and possibly what mad scientists out there are possibly trying to do it. Okay, so anyway, that's five stars in order and it could be, be able to do with more than five stars, too. So, those stars are actually hitting off of, I believe it's possibly a snowmobile or whatever over there. So anyway, all this stuff is able to be picked up at the, this time mark here in the video and so forth and so such. So all these items there that are I showed you, and we can zoom in real fast to finish this video out, that those are, I know that those are actually factual remnant to remnants between us and the sun that have been many, many times over. Uh, I have actual fact that those remnants exist and are in between us and the sun. And as you can see, we can zoom in on those. And you see them when they're farther apart of each other. Uh, and basically, just as, just as Mother Nature has given us a reflective telescope on all this stuff here, dear. Okay? This stuff is all there. It's not just some thing mechanical, man-made. Uh, it's basically you... Mother Nature gave us a telescope today on some video footage from Nehemiah Station because all that stuff is up there. Those are remnants in front of the, the suns that give us starlight down here on Earth. And watch the video before this one. And I'm just basically going until the video is done on this. This stuff is all actually there. And I'll pump out again real fast. Boom, boom, boom. Knock out of here. And we'll get to this. Pop this down to real quick to 125. And all this stuff is out there at that time frame. And that star is being seen through the thin atmosphere for a blinking Speckin and these stars blink at each other. All these stars we've always known, twinkle, twinkle, little star. The stars blink at each other. Electrical energy, megahertz, frequencies, radio signals. Okay? So, uh, scientific learning with Beano Black. So basically what we start need to start doing is saying, oh, the core sun, the actual biggest sun in our, that we magnetically rotate around, you mean? So, because all this stuff is out there. And it's all actual factual. This stuff is right here. Wouldn't have been able to do it without Navy, Lasco, and all the military branches, uh, satellites up in space. Uh, scientists just haven't wrote papers on this stuff yet. They don't need to write a paper. You can basically do it in a video just like this real fast, okay? So all this stuff is there. The remnants. It's all between us and the sun, okay? This stuff is huge. The sun is huge, okay? And then we... So, we're seeing it down here on Earth, okay? 
and IE, bam, there's our four objects, okay?